Hello everyone, let's start with today's news with Cardano's hard fork date. Yes folks, it has been announced. August 27th, the Chang hard fork has been announced. It will happen on this day. That's right, we've been waiting for it for a long time and it is finally here. Uh, Chang is the start of voting on Cardano and that actually means that, um, you know, Charles will be starting his uh, um, thing of stepping aside and let voters take the initiative. And we have to take this opportunity. Yes, stop listening to him and actually like vote for the things that will make Cardano maybe go up, including the EVM and the USDC thing. I know they're working on them, but we need to make these top priority. Remember, Charles's goal might be to save the world and make Cardano like the standard or whatever, but our goal is mainly just to profit off of the Cardano investment. So therefore, we need things to bring liquidity to Cardano. And uh, we also need, outside of bringing liquidity to Cardano, um, we also need to bring like you know more notice to Cardano. Cardano has no lack of developers, but does actually have a lack of users. So getting that EVM up, maybe we can take some of Ethereum's developers onto Cardano, take some of that liquidity. We also need to use some of the institutional funds that Cardano has to actually promote Cardano to users. Maybe do something like what Solana did, because you might think that Solana is a meme coin factory and that's all it is, but guess what? Solana's price and number went up. Cardano's did not, and we want Cardano's number to go up. Therefore, we actually kind of need what, what happened to Solana to actually happen to Cardano. I know some of you may not agree with me, but that's just the way I see it. I want number go up and I want to make money in this bull run. So we need to like do some of those things and vote for some of those things that will make that happen. So that's Cardano's Chang hard fork. The SEC seems like they rejected Solana's to ETF, but maybe not really. They, the ETF might have just been withdrawn. So I'm not really sure. Like they're saying they rejected Solana's ETF, but I think they just withdrew the ETF. This, as people are talking about, is Solana a security? But it doesn't seem like it because um, the SEC did actually remove Solana, Cardano, and others from the securities list when they were suing Binance. So like... The US SEC recently rejected applications for Solana ETFs, blocking its entry into traditional financial markets, while Bitcoin and Ethereum ETFs have been approved. But uh, I'm not really sure if that's the case. Over the weekend, alert market watchers noticed the applications for Solana's ETFs by Venek and 21 shares have been removed from CBOE's website. So they could have actually been withdrawn. These applications, known as 19B4 forms, were never officially submitted to the Federal Registrar, likely due to concerns over Solana's classification as a security. This follows the SEC's recent efforts to change the status of assets like Solana, Polygon, and ADA in its ongoing legal case with Binance. Now, they were going to sue Binance for those three being securities, but now it seems like they've moved them off the list. So I think they're still kind of in flux. It does actually look like Van X and 21 shares have kind of like withdrawn their application until actually things, until things settle down. We also have um, uh, this thing from Twitter right here um, from someone actually posting on this. Forms 19.4B for Van Eck and 21 shares Solana ETFs appear to have been removed from the CBOE website. Documents SRCBOE BZX 2024-066 and SRCBOE BZX 2024-067 aren't accessible anymore via direct link, are no longer visible in the BZX pending rule changes. Another interesting thing is that both applications were filed on July 8th, but the SEC never issued notices of filing for them. My question is, is it mean that the 19 b4 is withdrawn so they could have been withdrawn instead of just being rejected maybe the issuers saw that they were not ready for such things i'm not really sure anyway solana is not getting an etf within the next eight months and some of us were hoping uh they were the third thing i want to go over is that the crypto super PAC has gained a victory this time in arizona this is the democratic primary so both these uh people that they um that are running are democrat 
And I think this might be a Democrat district. So they just want the more crypto friendly Democrat. So crypto candidate Yasamin Ansari, supported by more than 1 million in crypto super PAC funds, claimed victory in an Arizona congressional primary. So the super PACs are like, you know, supporting candidates from both sides. If there's like a district where obviously like one party is like so far ahead that the other party really doesn't really have a chance, they're going to spend more money in the primary, making sure that their guy is on the ticket. So this was a very close race, and uh, the pro-crypto guy only beat the non-crypto guy by 39 votes. And the crypto pack spent over a million dollars on the uh, winner. So you can bet that winner is going to listen and bend the knee to crypto because they need that money, or he or she might get primaried next time. According to an August 20th report from the Associated Press, Arizona officials announced that Ansari was the winner of a recount between Democratic candidates in a state primary election. After primary results were tabulated starting July 30th, election officials found Ansari was leading by less than 0.5% of the total votes cast, and there had to be a recount, and she only won by 39 points votes on the recount. Uh, the Super PAC spent more than $1.3 million in media buys, and they finally got a supporter on the uh, in the House of Representatives. So like any crypto bills that come out, we will have one more vote. So that's the news for today. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe, hit that bell notifications button. Thank you and have a nice day.